if you're standing on the on the ground in shoes that are allow enough uh, conductivity through mm-hmm. in a floor that has somewhat of a path back to the source, well, now that electricity is using your body mm-hmm. as part of the circuit to get back to the source. Yeah. And that may or may not, well, it's usually not going to be enough of a current, enough of a flow of electricity to actually, to actually trip that trip breaker. breaker. And so you could just be getting constantly shocked there. And if it's if it's a strong enough of a shock, you may not be able to let go. Yeah. Right where your main disconnect is, that's the only place where those two should become one. So the main disconnect is where the firemen would shut off the power to your house if there was a problem, or otherwise he would have to pull the meter off of your house. And the meter is that the big round thing that tracks the numbers and says you owe money. Yeah. And so we've seen a lot of those receptacles that when you stick the tester in, it says that everything's wired right. And and so when someone gets a home inspection, that's what the home inspector uses. He uses the tester and goes around. And then when we come to work on it, we pull it out and it has just like you said, a little jumper wire between the neutral screw and the grounding screw. So the white screw, the silver screw, and the green screw has a little wire that jumps between there and and that basically defeats the purpose of what you just explained. So it's actually connected not only at that main disconnect, but also at this receptacle. And why is that bad? Okay. Um, well, let's talk about the purpose of why we even need that. Um, I had started to say it was it's kind of a shortcut back. And what we want is to either blow a fuse, if you've got a fuse box, most people nowadays have breaker boxes. Um, we want to be able to trip that breaker, and those breakers will trip um, two different ways. Right, Stephen? Right. Uh, they'll trip magnetically if there's if there is a huge surge or a short circuit, and they they also have a, a bimetallic strip in there that, which means that there's two different types of metal that are fastened together, I guess. One side, it's going to, as it as it begins to warm up, one contracts faster than the other side, so it actually pulls away and breaks contact that way, and your breaker can trip. Mm-hmm. And the breaker has kind of like a, it's got some springs in it and a mechanism, kind of like a, a mouse trap. So once it's been tripped, you have to go back and reset it again. So it's it's open and it's done its job, and then you have to go back and reset it later. So the breaker is doing the same thing as a light switch, except for it has sort of an automatic functionality to it. So what is it that causes the breaker to trip? We have the overload and the short circuit, but can you explain the difference between those two? Yeah, so the overload would be, uh, it'd be kind of like gentle warming up. Let's say that you've just plugged in too many things into that circuit. You've got all the lights on. They're all on the circuit, and then you've also got you're playing stereo, and and then your teenage daughter comes in and plugs in a a curling iron or something. I, I'm just throwing this out there. Curling irons and blow dryers they use a lot of energy, so it's pretty common to have too many things on, let's say in a bathroom. Mm-hmm. But that's what's happened there. You you don't have a short circuit, but your breaker is is protecting the insulation on the wiring, because mm-hmm. if the wiring gets too hot, then it will melt the insulation off. The copper won't melt for a long time, but if the insulation comes off, then you've got you've got some issues. You've got some serious issues. And yeah, and worse yet is when those issues are in the inside the wall. But we will right. we might save that for a little later on. So the overload 
I'm going to try to bounce this off of you in the simplest ways that I can think of. But so the overload is basically when there's, so we say we have a 20 amp breaker. Mm -hmm. The overload is going to be when that circuit is using more than 20 amps for right. such a certain period of time. So there's a little bit too much electricity flowing. Yeah. And that would cause that uh, bimetallic strip in there to flex and to break the circuit and open that that fault. And that way it would allow it to cool off again. And it's also telling you, now you could run back over there and turn it back on again and keep doing the same stuff. And that's not advisable. Uh, it's doing it for a reason. It's doing what it's supposed to do. So yes, the overload is a slow warming up. Mm. As and opposed, then, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead, the short circuit short circuit is instantaneous because you've got um, maybe so you've got a breaker for 20 amps but a short circuit could be hundreds even thousands of amps depending on how much energy you have at the point wherever the short circuit is created so what happens in that case this is when it's nice to have uh, a grounding wire or some kind of a short circuit back to the panel it doesn't have to go through the grounding conductor. It can just be some other short where you've got energy going out of that breaker way more than 20 amps. So I like to think of this like a car battery, which is DC electricity, but most people know what a car battery looks like. So your car battery has many, many circuits that are tied through it which okay. controls your dashboard lights your headlights your you know all sorts of stuff in your car but if you set a screwdriver from one of those terminals to the other please don't do that you can youtube somebody else doing it uh but that's a short circuit right because it's not it doesn't have all those other things to flow through it's just running straight from one right. to another yeah there has to be some resistance you could uh you could take a wire and put it across two battery terminals and that wire would get very hot very quick. If and disintegrate got... even, maybe, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard this story of, uh, I may get the details wrong, but someone was running a fish tape, which is a metal, a metal, basically a metal pulling tool. Uh -huh. And so you roll it out through the pipe or whatever and they accidentally hit the the lugs in the main panel which is where the wires connect and yeah. it was the main lugs on the main panel and so well i guess it would be on the main breaker or something like that but there's no overcurrent protection there so there's no breaker there's no fuse or anything and his his fish tape disintegrated so why why does that happen and why does that not happen in our house <laughs> uh, is that one too uh, deep should we save that one well uh yeah we're getting into a lot of uh, good electricity questions and stuff um i we could say it the short way i guess or uh, you have to have some kind of resistance in there to make it useful to you otherwise you've just got thousands of amps going through um, your circuit that wasn't designed to and it depends on, again, how much energy you have at the point where the short circuit happens. Uh, and there's a lot of energy. The closer you get out to that transformer, uh, that's why outdoor circuits are more dangerous than indoor, because they're usually closer to the equipment, to mm -hmm. your source. And the nice thing about being way back in, in your house maybe down in your basement or up in your attic and you have a little short circuit there, um, you may barely see a spark. Um, but if you're standing right next to the panel and you do this, it's probably going to blacken your fingers or um, you're going to could have a fire there. Mm -hmm. That's just or, because there's more energy available. Right, exactly. And I think you know, when we do more of these calls like this, I think it might be helpful if we get um, 
like I could connect my iPad to this and we can draw a circuit yeah. and stuff like that. That might be helpful too. So people can visualize that because that's even hard for someone learning electrical as an apprentice is the way that it's shown on the, you know, the wiring diagram isn't the way it looks in the house. Yeah. It takes a little getting used to to understand that. So Stephen, can you can you maybe describe what happens with the ground wire? Because so far we've talked about how the breaker will work, but how does the ground wire, um, how does it help? How does it help to protect? Because yeah. I think the whole grounding thing is kind of, there's a lot of uh, mythology around it. It's almost like uh, we think, we hear, that as long as something is grounded, now it's safe, or electricity just wants to get to the ground. Yeah. And these are these are things that really need to be correct. Yeah. Because they're dangerous. If you have the wrong ideas about electricity, you can get yourself into trouble expecting it to act a certain way. And, um, and you've got, or here's another one. Um, electricity always takes the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Probably heard that. I yes. remember hearing that. Oh yeah. And if you start reasoning with that kind of stuff, and it's not completely true or it's not accurate, you can get in, you can get yourself hurt, or worse. Yeah. So I think we'll we'll do our best to talk about this, and and you know maybe take two and take three. I think we'll get better at explaining it, but. Um, I guess the the way that I might describe it is a lot of the things that you plug in have a cord, which have a cord with three prongs. Mm -hmm. They have some sort of a metal casing or some sort of a, you know, screws that hold it together that possibly could be energized. Mm -hmm. So the ones with two prongs are often some sort of insulated appliance or something like that, meaning that under any normal circumstances, unless that thing gets cut apart or something, you're not going to touch anything live. Any metal conductive parts. Yeah. And so the third prong, the grounding prong, which is connected to that grounding conductor, is meant to be, okay, if there's some kind of a malfunction within this appliance or this tool or whatever it is that you're plugging in and it happens to energize that metal casing. Mm -hmm. Well, now that metal casing is tied to that third prong and it, it lets the electricity have a nice um, low resistance path back to the source so that it is able to make that circuit. So connect that circuit and quickly shut the breaker off. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that'd be a good way to say it. Now, if you don't have that, or if you're like some that I've seen that they cut that third prong off the cord because they want to plug it in somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Now that same scenario happens. You're holding the drill. Your finger touches the screw. If you're standing on the, on the ground in shoes that are allow enough uh, conductivity through mm -hmm. in a floor that has somewhat of a path back to the source. Well, now that electricity is using your body mm -hmm. as part of the circuit to get back to the source. Yeah. And that may or may not, well, it's usually not going to be enough of a current, enough of a flow of electricity to actually, to actually trip that breaker. breaker. And so you could just be getting constantly shocked there. And if it's if it's a uh, strong enough of a shock, you may not be able to let go. 